Ho ho ho! Good evening, my little rapist skunks. We're talking about France today. Uh, yeah, Pepe Le Pew was pretty creepy in retrospect. I, uh, I don't know what's up with that. I guess it was alright in the, uh, 70s, 80s, and 90s to, uh, run around the opposite sex. Like, not taking no for an answer and jumping on them and tying them up and stuff. Anyway, Pepe Le Pew aside, let's talk about some other French fuckery tonight. Um, first off, let me just state that, uh, y'all know DI2, Shimano DI2 has synchro shift, right? So, you can set some DI2 up to do this cool thing where you basically are shifting one shifter, and as it goes up or down the rear cluster, what happens is that it'll get to a certain point and just know, it'll know... Uh, through circuitry and like a little uh, onboard brain, it'll know to shift. And so what you end up with is, you know, I don't know if they make a triple, but like, let's say like at least a double, where you're shifting from your hard gear up, 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 and then at a certain point, rather than needing to grab your left shifter and shift, the computer inside the, uh, the electronic shifting will shift into the next gear. Now, as I understand it, the next gear, and I haven't played with too much of this stuff. I played with this stuff, but I haven't played with the DI2 synchro shift. So, the next gear <coughs> might not actually be, let's say you go one, two, three, and then it shifts in the front. Well, it, it might not be middle chain ring or whatever, small chain ring, and four. What synchro shift might do, at least what this did, and I'm assuming uh, that Shimano would, would follow suit is it probably goes one, two, three, and then at the same time it shifts the front chain ring, it goes back to two. So you have a, you have a smoother, you know, this will not write on this, but rather than going it's gonna smoothly, smoothly shift gears for you. So that's synchro shift. Now, I didn't immediately recognize that we had one of these, uh, because the only model of this that I've played with or seen was the complete group, um, and it was quite nice. So rather than being this hunk of injection molded plastic garbage, it was actually a beautiful CNC machine shifter, and derailleur, I should say. Uh, maybe the front derailleur? It's been 20 years, I can't remember the, rear, the front derailleur. However, this is sort of the ghetto model, and it's from a company called EGS. And they were some homies out of France. Uh, to be specific, and I'm going to butcher this because I don't speak frog, but Franck Savard and Christian Gauthier. Gauthier? Gauthier? Um, these two fellas started this company, EGS, which, you know, who knows what it stands for. Uh, might be like excellent gear systems or, or, or maybe it's just eggs. Eggs. Uh, and, you know, to be honest, it's kind of a a cool product. So this is a two cable system. Now unlike the other two cable systems that I've showed you already, this two cable system is not uh, doing what say for instance a roll off um, uh, 14 speed internally geared hub two, sh uh, two cable shifter system is doing which is to say that the two cables are going to the same, it's not a derailleur, but the same shift mechanism in the rear and one is pulling and the other is pushing. So there's not really a spring in there, they're doing this and they're rotating a little member that is actuating the shifts. So this is two discrete shift cables, one going to the front derailleur and one going to the rear. And the mechanism inside, and you may ask, well, if this is from the 90s, how in the living hell is it an 11 speed? Well, how it's an 11 speed is this is a mechanical synchro shift shifter. On bikes with these, you would have one shifter, this shifter, and two brake levers. That's all you would have. And so what you would do is you would start, you know, on either side of the cassette. And this shifter is basically waiting for the right impulse, and then it will jump several gears to do the same thing as I was describing a moment ago that DI2 is doing electronically. So there are about 11 usable gears in a triple with seven speeds in the back. So these would be gears that are not redundant, you know? These are gears that are not cross-chained heavily or in, a, in some other way fucked up. So what this shifter does is, as you shift through, oh, 
Yeah, nine or eight is the break point. Let's see. Easy. Easy. We're at nine. Oh my god. And then that would have shifted the front. That would have shifted the front derailleur. And then it'll continue on. And then, oh, right here at five. Oh, that's a huge one. So I don't know if it's functioning properly or if it's just hard to twist because it's not attached to a handlebar. But that is a shocking amount of tension needed to shift the front derailleur. So, you know, it's for a triple. You see two shifts in there. Now we're at gear one, and it has eliminated the shitty cross-chained uh, redundant gears that uh, we don't want, the gears that don't matter. So we have one shifter, 11 <laughs> arguably smooth transfer from speed to speed to speed in a range that, just like my invisible pen mark uh, earlier, doesn't do this. It should just go like this. Now, that's funky, right? And uh, it's not like Shimano is infringing on, on EGS's patents. Uh, the company went bankrupt in like 2001, and um, Shimano just bought the patents. And it's crazy because we're still seeing Synchro Shift in a way, just from a different company and implemented in a different way. Um, and I will say, like, the patents are ridiculous and outstanding. Um, so as far as I know, this unit here would have shifted just off-the-shelf derailleurs. I believe that the 7-speed, or 11-speed one, uh, was meant to be used with, like, you know, whatever, Shimano shifters, uh, our derailleurs front and rear. Um, later, a little bit later, and this is the stuff that I've played with in the past, they came out with, imagine this, in sparkly, beautiful silver aluminum. Everything was, was I mean, obviously the handle is still rubber, but everything else is just CNC machined, super high-end uh, aluminum. Think of the, uh, the white industries uh, shifter, you know, something like that. And then, those crazy French bastards introduced that shifter with this derailleur. I wish I had a physical copy of it so I could show you. Um, also, I want to give a shout out to Disraeli Gears. Um, a lot of like strange, uh, weird, odd, or just plain awful derailleur stuff, you can find a wealth of information at Disraeli Gears. Um, the, the person who owns Disraeli Gears truly has a love for derailleur gears and has taken the time to beautifully photograph and um, catalog all of the stuff that we need to know about defunct fucking French derailleurs. So, this is a weird looking derailleur, is it not? If I remember correctly, and we'll look at the patent in a second, honestly, but this wheel is like, it's a roller, it has another jockey wheel inside of, of like a clamshell roller thing, and the derailleur itself, instead of hanging down towards the ground where it could be subject to an impact or, or scuff or derailleur hanger bending, this whole kit and caboodle actually is sort of like running along your uh, your chainstay. Um, yeah, and it's funny, it's like, you thought we only started having utterly fucked up looking derailleurs in 2017. It's like, nope. We've had them for 20 years. Here's my patent. So as you can see, we have a very, very linear derailleur. We've got a pulley here. Cable comes in straight down. Looks like they were counting on a, uh, a top routing or a seat stay routing. Um, circlip, circlip, cable pinch here, circlip, circlip. Oh yeah, so this, you can see the outline of the, pul the third pulley wheel inside of this uh, little cage here. That's guiding the chain up over and through here. And then you have a little rocker style, like that Suntour derailleur that I did in my derailleurs video. You have a little rocker style cage. So. It's, it's going the completely wrong direction, but um, apparently these were, were favored by French downhillers of the era. Uh, maybe because it tucked so far away from the, uh, the things that you could hit with your derailleur. In any case, I, I've played with one before in person. It shifted nicely, you know, it, didn't, it wasn't awful, and uh, it, was, it was beautifully made. All this stuff was like top shelf shit, so uh, take that for what you will. Um, the main thing is... And and I don't know if I should do this, but we're gonna we're gonna fucking do it anyway. Um, this idea is so cool. I kind of want to see how it works. Uh, the problem is the problem is this. They really don't want you to get inside. It says right there, 
do not open, exclamation point. And the bolt that they've used is a security uh, Torx. Um, I should point out also, here you go, these are the cable, pults, uh, cable ports. We get F for front derailleur and R for rear. The cables go straight through there. Um, shall we? Should we take it apart? I think we should probably take it apart. Who knows if I'll ever put it back together again. Uh, a lot of times things that are marked do not disassemble are just fine. You can pull them apart and they really just don't want morons d digging through there. But if you're like, you know, three quarters of a moron, it's fine. Uh, you can put it back together. However, very occasionally, the uh, do not disassemble uh, is serious business. Uh, that, that tiny percentage of the time what they mean is, this will explode like a, a clockwork hand grenade inside of your hands if you even look at it wrong. So, uh, let me get some nicotine in my lungs, and uh, I'll put on a brave face, and we'll give it a try. I just want to see, like, what it does, you know? I want to crack it open and see, um, is there, like, a lobe? Does it cam over and cause the second shift to occur? Um, is there a, a, uh, a pawl? that will get engaged with a catch and drag the front derailleur over. Uh, I have no idea how these work, and I'm actually quite curious. So, nicotine first, brave face second. Hold on. Let's do it. You like how I've daisy chained all of this snap-on garbage together? Speaking of snap-on and garbage, Ooh, I heard something go snap. The kind of snap that comes from a spring. So, I think it's probably well and truly fucked. Maybe they were serious about that warning. I'm growing my hair out, so I got myself a disgusting redneck hat, which I am totally in love with, uh, to get me through the awkward hedgehog phase of my hair. Now, continuing on, I should probably put some downward pressure on this as I remove this. You disassemble dangerous springy things like, uh, I don't know, like mainsprings and guns and stuff, and, so, and you learn really quickly to hold the assemblage together as you remove things because it'll spring apart. Um, another thing you learn is that sometimes you have to remove barrel adjusters before it'll come apart. I don't think that's the case on this one, so I'll leave this in C2. Oh my god. Moment of truth. Oh, things are springing. Things are definitely springing. Might need some leverage here. Oh god, it hit me in the guts. Holy shit. Well, it's open now. Let's take a look. That that was seriously like a rifle mainspring popping off and hitting me. Uh, <laughs> oh, man, that was dumb of me. I think I actually could have let go of some of that spring tension if I had taken off the barrel adjusters. It didn't seem like there was a clear port, but, uh, you know, I am seeing that this goes into this receiver like so, hopefully. Like so. Yeah. God, no wonder it's so hard to turn. Holy shit balls. Oh, that's because I got it backwards. I'm Lemoron. Still, these are these are huge aggressive springs for the purpose of shifting bicycles. So we have another spring here. Oh, interesting. We have like a cam track. So. Oh, it's labyrinthine. There's a dead end for each front, front gear shift. Oh my god, so the inside, see those little bumps? I believe, yep, that's that feeling. So much like a SRAM grip shift, 
the inside is what's shifting our rear derailleur. Oh my god, and there's sections where it's missing. So deep tooth, skip, skip, deep, 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 deep. So that's how they're achieving their skipping of the rear derailleur. I'll learn more about this as I put it away. If I've made any mistakes, I'll, I'll correct them in a video later, or if you know more about this, or if you happen to be a depressed Frenchman who sold his patents to Shimano in 2001, you can go ahead and comment in the, uh, in the little box below. But so far, what I am seeing is, what is that, hooks for the spring? This grease is horribly fried and sticky. I feel like the spring should go right in here. It's the problem with exploding mechanical grenades. When they explode, it's very difficult to figure out how to put them back together. Yeah, that looks like the spring carrier. And so this spring flexes out of the way on these little teeth. Yuppers. And cables go in there. Guide rods go in here. God damn. Let's see if I can reassemble this without this on, if that helps me. Oh, it has a little, it has a little cage. Well, pray for me. We're going to give it a try. I can't believe it actually gut shot me. It's fucking hilarious. Oh my god, do I have to preload? They must have had a jig to do this. Honestly, like they 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 must have had a fucking jig. Because this this is an insane amount of spring tension. All right, here's the deal. You all get how this works. You also really get why the fuck they told me not to take it apart. I was not expecting this. This is phenomenally cool. You know, we have two layers of shifting, rear derailleur, and then catches. Wait, what is it catching on? Let's see. Those springs are applying pressure. Oh my god, these springs. I don't know if you can see this. See those two tabs right there and right there? Those Yep. Um down down. Those tabs are what are sitting in these tracks. And the cables, wait a minute, oh my god, I was wrong. So the, I was wrong and I wasn't. So here's the deal. This is not actually mm, interacting with the cable. These are the detents which are holding it in every position, front and rear. Each one of these clicks is being held in place by those springs. Now. These, they are the holders for the cables. This is what you plug the cables into from this rubber port. There's a starting position, and as you twist the shifter, 
these move in ways you can see they vary and they vary apart from each other and no matter where you are even if there's a click in here the distance that the cable is pulling this is basically glue look at this that's that's the uh, the grease that's in there the distance that these are pulling the cable varies because it's in this serpentine track now that was unexpected and very cool. I had it totally backwards when I first looked at it until I realized that the cable sat in these things. You probably got it way ahead of time since you're not getting hit in the stomach with springs, but hell yeah, that's French fuckery. That's freaking amazing. Uh, Shimano is clearly not using this patent anymore. Maybe, maybe they're just using the trademark of Synchro Shift at this point, but um, yeah, holy shit, how cool is that? I will put this together on my own time. Uh, I will possibly make a tool to uh, to reinstall this because literally, like a Glock slide spring is less strong than each one of these springs. It's incredible. Um, that's about it for tonight. It's starting to get cooler out and starting to get darker earlier, um, so I'll be definitely making more videos. Uh, I wanted to point out real quick that Japan does not want me to use this chain ring on a bicycle without brakes. And I'm like, you know what? Fuck you, Japan, this is America. We, uh, we're allowed to kill ourselves with brakeless track bikes if we want to. Uh, that's about it. Uh, have a good night. Yellow Sheldon out.